Hi guys, uh, today I'll show you my homemade waste oil heater that I made. It's forced air, so it'll sit outside. Uh, I originally made it to heat my barn, but uh, now it's heating my house. So I'll show you what I got. So, this is pretty much it. It might look a little crude at first, but let me explain it. So, the original concept is I needed it to sit outside. I didn't want to put a homemade burner that I had inside of, you know, my wood shop, which is a barn that's got straw in it. For some reason, insurance didn't like that idea. Can't imagine why, right? So now uh, I changed the plan to it would sit outside. It was forced air, could be away from the building, pump heat in. Super simple. So what you got is you got a 55 gallon drum. Um, it sits inside of a homemade steel cart that I made and it's all wrapped in tin all the way around and you just circulate the air around it. Oh, that's all right. I got a lot of traffic going on by here. So let's see, the first part is my metering right here. That runs to a five gallon bucket. I JP welded a fitting into the bucket. It's a little crude but it works right now and that runs to a T. You can adjust it here. The T runs down, or it runs into the T, and you can just barely see it. I'm really dumping oil to it right now. Probably should dial it back a little bit, but I'm just starting to heat my house up now. It's like 67 degrees in there right now, so kind of putting screws to her. A uh, couple things to know about these is it's just a T. I drilled a hole in the back of it so you can look through it and see. Turn my brightness up here a little bit, it'll probably help. I drilled a hole in the back side of it so you can see the stream. Now, another thing about it is there's a fitting in the center in there. I don't know how well you can see it. There's a fitting in there because if you just put your, your piping to here and just turn it on, oil is going to stick to the side and run down. It's, you're not going to see it. So what I had to do is I had to put another fitting in the middle there so it would center the stream. That way you can see it. And it also, I made it a certain size to where I can't give it too much oil. It acts as a restriction and it's a safety feature. So if somebody comes out here and messed with it or I bumped it or whatever, you couldn't melt the stove down by giving it too much oil. So that's an important thing to think about. You kind of want to have some limits set. From there, it runs to a copper tube and it's oversized a little bit. When you make this stuff, you got to think about the winter time because the oil is going to be thicker. So you, you want to make things a little bigger than you need, you know, because it's going to run slower. Uh, it runs down here. Now, I'll explain what's going on in here before I show you. There is black iron pipe that runs from one side of the barrel all the way to the other side. Now what that does, I can't zoom out here at all. So what that does is it just it keeps it's centered in there so it doesn't bounce around or anything because this is made to be portable and what it is is uh, the black iron pipe comes in it goes to another T goes 90 and it goes down into a little fire pan all it is is a stainless steel dog bowl that I use uh, it will withstand a lot more heat than just regular steel would so in that bowl I'm forcing air into it and this copper line runs in through that black iron pipe goes 90 degrees and goes flush with the bottom of the other black iron pipe that comes into the bowl. Now the other side of this, this black iron pipe, comes over here, goes 90 degrees and goes all the way back to a draft inducer I'll show you. And that's where I'm forcing my air through. Uh, I'll give you a little look here. So this is how you're forcing your air in, just a squirrel cage blower I had, just pushing cold air in. If you wanted to be more efficient, you could put a return duct down here and run that back into your house, just like your furnace. I'm not too worried about it. It's, you know. Right here is my draft inducer. That's just off of like a water heater, and that's what's forcing air into the firebox. Okay? You gotta have you gotta have a lot of air and oxygen being pushed in there. Because if you just put, you know, if you just put oil in a pan and light it, it doesn't, it's not real eventful. You know, you gotta make it real turbulent. So this blower 
blows on the back side of the 55 gallon drum and it hits the back side and it makes it just swirl around in there really nice and then it comes out the discharge here which then runs into my house i'm replacing the window right now it's on order for like two months so i just took the opportunity to just run the ductwork through that this sometimes when it gets really windy out here which is pretty often you got to have this otherwise the air blows through there and messes with your stream no just something to think about you'll figure out if you need it or not oh and one other thing with this lid here you see how it's got the removable whole ring there I opted for that because if you want to go in and have to make any changes or it's easier to it's easier to clean it and all that stuff you can just pop the ring off and take the whole face of the barrel off that's really nice and this door you can get these anywhere they sell wood stove kits they're easy to come by but uh, take a look in here it's pretty hot it's hard to even hold my phone there that close like I said, the whole thing's made on a, a cart. Right here is a little hitch I made for it. You know, it's got handles on it. You and a buddy can pull it around the yard. You got a hitch on it, you can pull it around the lawnmower, four wheeler, whatever you got. Uh, it's pretty light. The chimney, you can pull the pieces off if you want to transport it somewhere. I got it, I had it shorter, but I decided I wanted it taller because when you go to open the door or anything, you get smoke blown in your face. So it's just nicer this way. You notice you're pushing a lot of oxygen into it. There's really not a lot of smoke. It's pretty clean. So really the more air you can put in there, the leaner you can get it, the better it burns. So that was one important thing. I didn't want it covering everything in soot that I'm eating. You know, this way there's there's really no odor. It's super easy to light. It lights easier than any wood stove. You just throw a piece of cloth or some cardboard in there, drip some oil on it, turn it on. Let it get hot and then you kick your fans on turn the oil on and away you go so i'll uh try and include some pictures of the build i didn't take any pictures or any video when i built it um but i did take pictures uh, i really didn't know what i was doing what i wanted to do at the time so i'll, I'll try and include those in the end uh, but yeah it's it's heating my house uh there's as I found out, there's no insulation when I took this window out. There's no insulation in my walls, so that explains why I went through four tanks of propane last year. That was a very expensive winter. And I only kept the house at like 65. Let's go in here and take a look and see what we got. I just started this thing and hasn't been running long. I can get I can get this thing all the way up well past 160 degrees discharge. Take a look here. Getting to 120 right now. There's a lot of air coming out of that. You probably can't really tell, but I keep my carbon monoxide detector too. You can never be too careful. And there's smoke detectors in here as well. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I don't know if you guys got any interest in it, but uh, I plan on making another heater. <laughs> I got a compost pile that I'm going to be building, a really large one, a hot compost pile. I got some different breathing systems and stuff for it and I'm gonna put PEX tubing in it and I got a radiator it's gonna go in my kitchen and I'm gonna try and pull heat out of it so we'll see how that goes uh, I can make my own compost reactor so if you got any interest just watch for that but uh, any other questions just let me know I will try and upload some pictures of the build at the end here if I can figure it out and that's pretty much the gist of it thanks guys